Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel, your number one source for income-oriented investing. I got Howard here with me uh, once again, back on the channel, CEO of Curve. How are you, Howard? Thanks so much for Doing taking great. the time. Glad to be back, Adriana. Excellent. So uh, we're going to talk about your new uh, KQQQ ETF a, a little bit later. But first, I want to ask you about your single stock uh, covered call e ETF. So uh, just in case, you know, my audience uh, is, is not aware, you guys have quite a few of them. You have an Amazon one, Apple, Google, Microsoft, Netflix and Tesla. So you have them here on the screen. So my first question is, I believe you've recently made a major announcement regarding the, the management of the ETFs. It seems like the, ma the options management who is now being done by NEOS, uh, mm -hmm. you're bringing that in-house. Can you, can you maybe talk a little bit about that? Sure. Uh, when we first launched, uh, we issued the, the ETFs, uh, you know, in a different trust to kind of keep the economy of a scales. Uh, and we hired um, um, NEOS to do the execution to because they already were trading a lot of options. And obviously they have their own options ETFs yeah. to consolidate the trading to kind of get some benefits in terms of, you know, um, economies of scale. Um, earlier this year, we have uh, have our own ETFs, and then uh, we issued our first ETF, KQQ, which we will talk about from that trust. And we have sort of our um, portfolio management capabilities built out. So, so now, so what we want to do is move the six that we've um, issued into our own trust and consolidate uh, all of the trading in one place. So we're looking to basically increase operational efficiencies and also uh, continue to kind of drive down trading costs by aggregating everything we trade in one place. Okay, so this is to drive down costs. Do you feel like maybe uh, the fee will go lower, or is it just the trading costs in the backs in, in the background? Uh, yeah, so the trading cost is will be um, uh, hopefully lower, and that will show up in the performance of the fund, right? Okay. So, um, and um, most of the things actually stays the same. Um, the fee, the custodian, the fund admin, the the auditor, they all stay the same. So the 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 difference is moving into our trust, we're the sole advisor of the ETF. Um, and then um we kind of just cons consolidation to make sure everything is under the same umbrella. And um the the proxy, so this is maybe a message for the existing shareholders. The proxy vote should have already been delivered in your email address. And we really hope that people would would vote for for the proxy. Okay, so you do think it's going to be in general a positive thing on the performance go going forward? Okay, yeah, that's that's what we hope. Yeah, expect. Okay, that. perfect. And if you don't mind, I just want to review their performance thus far versus what's you know pretty logically your your main competitor, which is Yield Max. So they also have you know single stock covered call ETFs. Um, with, with even the same management fees and stuff like that. So I, I did a comparison with a, you know, I'm not hundred percent sure if they're hundred percent accurate, but I, you know, just doing a total return calculator using the dividend channel website. So here's uh, the curve ones are going to be on the left side in black. And then the yield max ones are in blue on the right. So uh, Amazon slightly underperformed a little bit, but it's pretty much close. Apple, a little slight underperformance as well you have google which has a massive outperformance i'm not sure exactly how that happened there any do you have any indication of why the google one it's it's really massively outperforming yeah i mean this applies to actually the tesla one also so you know i, I think when i first came on this channel you know we our philosophical way of managing these strategies that we want to have a balance between income generation and price appreciation, right? Yeah. So what that ended up being meaning that we, when we write our cover calls, we in, instead of writing daily or weekly, we write them monthly and we also write them a little bit out of the money. So when we launched and we, uh, especially with Google, we were able to capture, it was a, a period in which I think Google stock price was going up. So by writing a little bit out of the money, we were able to capture some of that price appreciation. It's a similar thing with, with Tesla um, you can see that Tesla has been kind of falling since the beginning of the year. And then in July, for example, it had a sudden increase in price jump, right? Mm -hmm. So by being able to write our cover calls a little bit out of the money, we were actually able to capture the price appreciation and um, and and be able to you know generate additional returns. So that to us, that balance between income generation and price appreciation is, is pretty important. Um, and 
I guess the one thing to mention is that if you look at sort of the volatility of our distribution or, or the steadiness of our distribution, we really try to keep it as predictable or as stable as possible. I, I think you're, you're aware many people use this to supplement their income. I don't yeah. think they want to have a surprise. Like the next month is so high and then the next month so low. So we've been generally really try to keep it as stable as possible. We distribute what the market gives us so we don't get into the whole NAV erosion uh, issue that oftentimes cover call strategies can have. We, we've never had a reverse split or, or anything. So we want to make sure that, that we want to be persistent in our income generation and, and kind of be as consistent as possible. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. Uh, so yeah, Tesla, Google, uh, outperformance there versus the yield max. And, uh, you know, I, I got to ask you, what about the ones that have underperformed like uh, Netflix and, and and the other ones? Do you think there's a specific reason for that? It's if, Is it just because how the market moved and yeah. because you do them more out of the money? So for instance, uh, Netflix, uh, so the reason why we do uh, monthly kind of uh, calls is that usually you observe this sort of mean reversion, right? It, you you see kind of a, a, a increase in the underlying stock and yeah. by month end or whatever the period is, they kind of mean reverted a little bit. So they kind of don't, uh, they expire out of the money, right? For for Netflix, if you actually look at what the stock has done is that it there was a continuous sort of increase. And so um, you don't see as much as that mean reversion. So it does hit some of our strikes uh, as we wrote it. So then that, as you know, cover calls can limit some upside. So that's yeah. where kind of the, the difference in performance happens. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Interesting. So uh, any plan, I know you can't talk about future products. I'm not aware if you have any uh, pr prospectuses out, uh, out there. Uh, are you planning on launching more of these single stock cover call ETFs or are you happy with the ones you have now? And it, on top of that, are there any plans for, for example, an all-in-one solution comparable to yield maxes, YMAX ETF, which is just a collection equal weight of all the single stock ETFs. Any plans for anything like that? Well, KQQ is our expression of like this all encompassing tech portfolio, which we can talk a little bit about. Yeah. Uh, we do have, we are pretty happy with the single names that we have, but we do have plans in other asset classes. Um, as, as you know, a lot of our backgrounds is in, you know, we come from PIMCO fixed income. So we, we, we think that's kind of a very interesting space. Um, we have been getting a lot of questions about in crypto. We, we want to be a little bit different. Um, mm -hmm. so we haven't had a really kind of interesting take on that. So it, we're considering, but we don't have a, 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 a strategy built right now. Um, and then there's other asset classes that are non-income generating that we think, you know, being able to access the volatility premium using options is, is very interesting. So that we, we definitely have other plans in, in place. Yeah. Okay. So let's talk a perfect transition. Let's talk about K. QQQ. So from reading, you know, the potential benefits here, uh, it says you're removing non-technology companies. I'm assuming you're talking about the NASDAQ 100. Yeah. And you're removing so, the non-technology companies from there. So this is a pure technology ETF, right? Correct. So this ETF, you know, we thought about the single names as sort of tactical or if, you know, the first group that we know a lot of people use it for is to supplement their income and they hold in their portfolio for, for quite a while, right? And there's kind of tax efficiencies built in to, to help that. But outside of that group, we thought about more of that sort of tactical uh, exposure. People want to get single name exposures and coming out, single name coming. But this triple Q is kind of designed to be a strategic exposure. So something that you would hold for like three to five years as a core part of your portfolio. Okay. So it's meant to stay there. And we kind of come from the premise of, you know, we have seen, we know, okay, even in July, right? People keep saying, well, is NVIDIA overvalued? Like, when is it going to turn? Is it going to correct? We kind of came from a different premise. We kind of accepted the fact that technology sector has exuberance and corrections, right? Yeah. Just this year, AI, any AI related stock has done really well. It corrected in July. Now it looks like it's sort of going back up. The, the, the previous cycle was sort of during COVID. Everybody was like, we're stuck in, in my room. So all of the technology names that enabled online shopping did really well. And as soon as we have news about the vaccine, they corrected, right? So we accept that this is sort of the behavior of the sector. So the question is, and this is especially great with option strategies, can we have a asymmetric upside and downside strategy? 
Meaning when the market is going up, can we magnify that upside? And then when the market is correcting, can we minimize that downside? Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. this is the expression of what we're trying to do here. So you're right. So the first thing is we, we always have this problem of a lot of people using NASDAQ 100 as sort of proxy for technology. Yeah. And we want to actually invest in the largest technology companies in the portfolio. So sort of the top 15, 20 names. And okay. if you look at the top 15 names in NASDAQ, three of them are not technology names. Costco, which maybe they have some technological advancement in you know, supply chains or operations. It's not what we would consider a technology right, company. Another one is Pepsi. Maybe the Coke bottle screw was like a good technology, but not in today's definition. And then there was like a third company, a, a, a German gas company called Linda. So the, the very first step is for, for us to filter out Basically, just because they're listed on the NASDAQ doesn't make them a technology company. So we want to make sure we're pure. And we also look at other exchanges where technology companies are listed. So, for example, Oracle is listed on the New York Stock Exchange. So oftentimes, uh, people don't have exposures to Oracle. And it's done very well this year. Okay. And I see uh, Oracle here. Yeah. Uh, I also and see... Sorry to interrupt. I see Amazon yeah. as well, which is yeah. technically not a technology company, but you guys decided to put it in. So our definition of technologies is any company that uses technologies to change its vertical. Okay. So, and, and I will say Amazon is sort of a, a different beast is because it derives a lot of revenue from AWS, which is definitely technology enabled. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Okay. That makes sense. So uh, you said there's something very interesting. Your goal with this ETF is to amplify the upside. Is that yeah. with stock selection? Is that what active management? How, how would you amplify the upside of these tech names? Yeah. So, so one of the th reasons why we didn't want to do an ETF of ETF of our cover call single names is I think everybody who uses this outside of income generation knows that a traditional cover calls does limit upside, right? And yeah. technology names, growth stocks have sometimes huge price appreciation. So the way that we actually magnify the upside is that Many technology stocks are considered growth stocks and growth stocks have momentum. And for the audience who don't know what that is, is basically technology stocks generally have this behavior that the price will keep going up and it will continue to go up for a period until there's sort of a pivot moment and then they correct, right? So, True. And, and the research that we do is that usually this momentum cycle is about nine months. So in our basket of 10 to 20 pure technology names, right? Uh, excluding the things that we don't want, we will look at to see if they have price momentum. And if they exhibit price momentum for say like two months, we will overweight them by two and a half percent. And when they are kind of midway in that nine month cycle at five months, we will overweight by another two and a half uh, percent. So what that means is that we want to give more capital, more weight to the, to the stocks that are actually appreciating in price. So we want to have magnify the price return when the, when the risk mm, tolerance okay. is in, in the market. Now, what happens when the stocks don't exhibit price appreciation, right? That's the perfect time for cover calls. There's right. three environments in which cover calls does really well. When the stock is going down, there's no positive price momentum. You write your cover calls. It always expires out of expiry. You get the full premium. Yeah. It trades sort of sideways or it's slowly increasing, right? So in a strategy, when there's no price momentum, we start writing cover calls in, in the ETF. There's also a really interesting behavior with a strategy, which is it's counter cyclical. So now if you have a mass market correction, what we did had in July, the signal will say, you should write cover calls on all your names. This is a great environment to write cover calls, right? Because one implied vol goes up when there's yes. more volatility corrections, right? You get more income. And then now you generate income and you're down, you're, you're mitigating your downside. Right. So, so there's many ways to, to, to mitigate downsides with options. Uh, so I have never seen uh, tail risk hedging uh, work very well because essentially you're trying to buy an insurance policy when the market corrects. Right. So the two decision point is how much you're willing to pay uh, for the insurance policy. So if you're buying puts, like how much do you want to spend, how out of the money do you want to, do you want to spend to, to have this downside protection? And two, how much protection do you want? How out of the money do you, you know, do, do you want to write it out? Because if you want to buy protection when the market is correcting, puts are already very expensive, right? That's the worst time to buy. So, and, and the, the, the key thing is when you're buying puts, you're using capital to protect your downside. So we kind of thought about like, what if we 
instead of using capital to mitigate downside, we generate capital to mitigate downside. And that's actually a really cool way to kind of, you know, um, uh, uh, use cover calls to to mitigate downside by using, and, and we see this in the single name cover call strategies too, right? The beta to the underlying is 0.8. When the market falls, the, the, the cover call, single name cover calls will fall a little bit less if you're doing it correctly. So so that's kind of, um, you know, what the, the strategy does. Now, the one thing that it doesn't quite fit is for traditional income investors. And I want to kind of give this caveat, right? You know, our our single name cover call strategies is meant for income investors. It is very steady. It ranges from 13 to 25, 30% of distribution, right? That's what the single name gives us. Because of this sort of maximizing total return, when the market is up, we want price return to shine and the market is going down, income return to shine. Yes. The income is more dynamic. It's going to range from 4% to 12%. You're talking about the yield here. The of yield, a, yeah. So yeah. when when the market is going up, we'll write less cover calls. So it'd be at the lower end. And when the market is correcting, we'll generate more income. So the income is actually increasing when the market increases. So in the last month, yeah. we sort of have a sideways market where we're writing 65% of the portfolio in cover calls. So we were able to generate 7%, but it's not sort of as stable as the, the single name ones because the purpose is a little bit different. This is for sort of for the... Uh, you know, people who want both growth and income. Right. In one. So, yeah. so I'm assuming you're saying you got to expect a little bit less yield more in the four to seven, yeah, and, eight percent range, something like that. Right. And if you look at like a full cover call, NASDAQ 100 is generally like 10 to 12 percent. Right. Yeah. So so in a market correction, we expect that 12 percent because we're writing all cover calls on 100 percent of the portfolio. Right. And so and then if we if we, we will always have some cover calls in the portfolio because not every single name has positive private momentum. So then it ranges between sort of this four to to 12 percent range when market is going up. But you're getting price appreciation uncapped. So that's sort of the trade off that you have in the fund. OK, so this is more of a total return technology product that's actively managed. And I'm just trying to to, to summarize here. Uh, but there is a little bit of income, except it's not going to be, it's not the priority of the fund. That's more for the, when you're writing the cover to calls uh, to mitigate the, the downside when you feel, okay, maybe with this name or right now we, we might have a, a little correction that's coming. So, you know, growth and income on technology to try to get you superior risk reward profile or total return instead of the NASDAQ 100 without yeah. the technology well, company, something like that. I would that's say. That's right. And, and, okay. but I would still that say that if you are like an owner of a triple Q, the passive yeah. NASDAQ hundred, you know, triple Q is generating 0.56% of distribution. Yeah, there's nothing, there's no dividends there barely. Yeah. So even in our lowest point where we're not like, we're still generating a good, like four to 7%, which is better than, than triple Q. And then you have sort of the, the price appreciation also. So you would, you would say this is kind of in the middle between QQQ and a NASDAQ 100 or technology full covered call ETF. Yeah. Like it's a in QILD, the which is the most extreme one. We're writing cover calls on the whole thing, generating 2 3% premium a month. You, you, this is kind of like in the middle. It's, you're trying to find a balance between growth and income. Correct. Yeah. Okay. And we want to make sure really the key difference is when the market is really ripping, like, you know, risk is on. We Less don't covered have calls. Upside. Exactly. Less yeah. covered calls. It makes sense. Uh, it makes sense. Uh, last thing I want to ask you about, I see that this is a big chunk of the portfolio. So are you actually buying the stocks and holding them? Are you buying them synthetically? What is this giant uh, market? Yeah. So, here? so there's a, a three different, com a, a few different components. So that the cash is there because we do get long exposure through synth synthetic replication, just like our single names. Okay. Uh, so you, this is only the top 10 holdings. If you have the whole holdings, you'll, you'll see actually calls and puts for even NVIDIA, Microsoft. So we, we do that to be, you know, capital efficient. Um, the, the second component of that is that this ETF can buy, if our model saying Tesla doesn't have price momentum, you should write cover calls. We can buy TSLP, which is our Tesla single name ETF. So this uh, is an okay. expression of that. ETF of ETFs. Um, and we have done actually a lot. Another thing we do in the portfolio is like, for instance, tax efficiency is very important. So for example, when we launched the ETF in July, Tesla stock has been
following. So there's sort of a loss, unrealized loss in that position. And our models say, well, there's no price momentum. You should start writing cover calls in, in on Tesla. Mm -hmm. So what we actually did was we did some tax, tax loss harvesting within the portfolio. We sold the Tesla stock, which we realized the loss, and then we bought our ETF. So any, any gains in that ETF can be offset by the loss that we gain on the on the Tesla stock that we real the loss that we realize. So there's a lot of like tax efficiency component that also happens. That would that would be that example that would become rock income, essentially, yes. right? Yes. So which is tax which is tax free, but it lowers your cost base. I personally always see rock as just a tax classification, nothing bad. It's not necessarily your own money back. I know a lot of people. I know that's the technical definition, but with these options ETF, a lot of them, if not all of them, have a lot of rock or a big rock component. But you're just offsetting losses, like you said, and it's just delayed capital gains. That, that's the way I see it. I see rock personally as a delayed capital gains, and this is of course if we're talking about non-tax sheltered accounts. Tax deferral. So, yeah. Yeah. Very interesting ETF here. Quite a some some good ideas here obviously it, it, it makes sense the, the logic behind it uh, it is still pretty new there's only been two distributions about seven percent yield now based on the last one but um uh and, and the mer is is it it's 99 or is it 79 yeah so it's it's so the affne is acquired funds fee so so this is kind of a peek into the origin of this ETF. Originally, we were going to use our own ETFs a lot and do the ETF of ETFs. So acquire fund fees is if we use another ETF, we also have to build in what the fee of the underlying ETF is. So you, you see there's a 20 basis points difference. We're not using that many of our own ETFs right now. So it's it's closer to the 0.79 uh, manager fee. Okay. The, the 20 basis points is the fee that you would pay by using another ETF and what the fee char is charged on those ETFs. So. Okay, yeah. fair enough. Fair it's enough. an estimate. Yeah, it's an estimate. Okay, so uh, well, still, in my opinion, it's still not not bad at all for uh, this all this active management that that's going on. It's definitely not a passive ETF. So, yet another interesting way for uh, I would say maybe a hybrid growth income investor. I, I think, like you said, this is probably a good complement to a, a high yield Nasdaq 100 if you want a little bit more growth, or it's a little bit, of, it's a good complement also to a QQ, if you hold QQQ or QQQM to actually get a little bit of income. It's like right in the middle. So pretty interesting, pretty interesting stuff. So thanks so much for going into the details on that, Howard. I have no further questions. Uh, so I wanna thank you for your time. I know you're a busy guy, you just got off another interview. So we're, uh, my audience is always looking forward to uh, Curves new new products we'll be tracking it and i want to thank you for for being a good friend of the channel as well so uh Great. take care howard thanks so much all right talk to you later Bye. hey don't go yet a few reminders before you leave did you know that i launched a youtube loyalty membership program where for only three dollars a month you could become a pii inner circle member where you will gain access to exclusive content exclusive videos and live streams as well as other perks and benefits including a really cool weekly opportunity report that's right if you're interested just click on the little join button next to the subscribe button to see what it's all about also, make sure to follow me on Blossom and download Blossom. It's a social investing app, which is really cool. You could share your portfolio, follow other people's portfolios, including my own. My username is Adrian underscore PII. So download it with the referral link below. Not only is it free, but you could actually earn cash by taking these really small, quick one minute courses. Really awesome. It's a no brainer. Also, make sure to visit our website, PassiveIncomeInvesting.ca. That's where you could book a one-on-one -on -one private coaching session with yours truly, with myself, where you could ask me all the questions you want. All the information and booking information is on the website. Make sure to check out that video on the homepage there to see how to book a one-on-one -on -one properly. Also on my website, you could purchase my digital product, which I'm very proud of, the Ultimate DIY Investing Package. This is a reference tool or a companion tool that will help you build your own portfolio. So it has lists of funds, it has sample portfolios, and it covers both the Canadian and US stock markets. And the good news is you'll only ever have to buy it once because it comes with free lifetime updates. And my plan is really to update the version every single year. So make sure to pick it up. 
Also, I have Questrade and Passive referral links below. So Questrade is the broker that I personally use and Passive is the broker companion tool or companion or assistant that I use. Really cool program, really cool software. So I have referral links for both of those. Questrade, $50 of free trades. And passive, I have half off for the elite membership if you're interested in the elite membership. And even if you want to start out with the free membership and upgrade to the elite afterwards, use my referral code so you could still get that 50% off. And don't forget that the elite membership of passive is 100% free if you use Questrade. For social media, we have a very successful and big Facebook group private Facebook group with over 14,000 members where we all try to help each other out. So make sure to join that group. Information is, in, is below. We also have Instagram where you could follow us or more personal stuff uh, when it comes to our life here in Panama. And there's LinkedIn as well. So as usual, everyone, how do I leave you? Continue to stay safe, stay healthy, and of course, stay passive. See you next time.